Welcome back guys, today we are checking out the Fuel EX 9.7 and this may be the best priced valued Fuel EX I've seen in a while. One, the new carbon frame looks fantastic. They've really improved the design of it. So up at the front here, it looks super clean. You can clearly tell it's carbon. It's fairly lightweight, obviously with the new kind of design of Fuel EXs. It's not exactly designed to be the lightest weight thing, but at around 33 and a bit pounds, this is not too bad for weight wise. As this is the newest version, it comes with the newest Fuel EX frame. So a lot more triangles, a lot more shape to it. Obviously down at the bottom there, they have a new flip chip, which allows access to a coil to be fitted in there, which is pretty cool. Also allows for some more major adjustments with geometry. You have the standard minnow link in the back end there, so you're able to flip those and rotate them exactly as you please to get a lower slacker geometry. And then on top of that, you're able to actually improve the head tube angle to a more slack downhill setup with an additional cup which does not come with the bike but it's purchasable pretty much any track retailer. Price spec wise we'll start at the front with the fork obviously it's this new Fox 36 which has been performing really well a decent amount of modulation and control and customization to it but also a nice blacked out look which I think works well with this exact color scheme. As we go to the back you've got the float x performance setup so this one again is by Fox, huge secondary chamber there. So it's gonna really be able to take the big hits very well. Again, a good amount of control and customization available on this setup with quick access to trail mode or downhill kind of softer modes. Brake wise, a solid setup, honestly. You've got the SLX four piston brakes there. So it's gonna be able to stop really well. Good amount of control, modulation, as with Shimano, it's touchy and fast responsive. And then you do have that quick adjust dial, so a toolless adjustment for reach, which works really well for anyone who's looking to get that customized feel from the brakes. The SLX stuff honestly performs pretty much as close as the XT stuff. It just is a little more affordable and technically weighs a little bit more. And you've got the same setup in the back brake with a four piston setup fully customizable handlebar. This is a, a really nice touch and honestly, very well performing. As we look to shifting, you have got the SLX shifter as well. So this one offers some texture. So this one offers some texture. It is just plastic. There is no rubber gripper on it, but it still feels good. And you can use a front shifter paddle to push or pull as well. When we look at the back, we have an XT derailleur and cassette with an SLX chain. So good performance, good durability, connecting to a 32 ring on the front. And this is an SLX branded crank as well. So good amount of quality to it. Durability should be solid and you should get a good lifespan out of this. Really as you pay for better quality parts, that's their most advertised feature. Once you pass this SLX range or hit the SLX range, you go to better quality and more importantly, more durable. So this one's still gonna last a good amount of time but there is technically better out there. As for frame features, you can see they've got that big oversized protector on the rear chain stays there and that chrome piece to prevent nicks and scratches from chain being pulled in a little bit. They also, on the carbon models, this is different from the aluminum ones, add this little flap here to prevent rocks and stuff from chipping or scratching where they may fly up, which is just kind of a nice little touch. And just like the Fuel EXE, they have a huge down tube protector. So this is gonna protect your bike from just chips and rocks. And it is bolted on instead of glue, so that is nice to see. We've seen some of the glue ones slowly fail over the time. Bolted on means it's replaceable, and most importantly, it won't just flop off on its own. As this is the 9.7 model, it does not come with any other carbon apart from the frame. So the handlebars and wheels are just straight aluminum. They are solid wheels, obviously. These are the line comp wheels, so they're still tubeless ready. Everything's good to go there. You get the XR5 team issue, so tubeless tires, big, huge, beefy tires. Trek has been sending some of them with one tire backwards and the other forwards, as people have noticed in the other video. We're not sure if this is purposeful or quality control down the tube. Sometimes it is good to rotate one, especially the front in a reverse direction, so you'll get extra traction. 
instead of having a front and rear dedicated, you will just simply have one tire which can do both. Geometry wise though, this looks fantastic. Dropper post wise, it has upgraded to that 34.9, so it's a thicker, it'll last longer, it's gonna be stronger, and you can get away with longer internals with that newer frame geometry. Honestly, a 9.7 at $5,800 Canadian is good value. Part spec wise, performance wise, what you could do with this bike now is all ridiculous. You're gonna be able to really go anywhere and do anything with this bike. And if you live somewhere like a mountain where you're gonna have permanent downhill, although this is just single crown fork with that adjustable geometry, you're gonna be able to really push it to its limits and see a little bit extra strength. Like I said, this is a carbon model, but it is not the lightest weight one around. The Fuel X line is going away from the kind of lightweight bike that it is. They're leaving that to the top fuel line. And now it's a more durable carbon, so it's gonna be stronger. With the ability to add a coil shock and really rake out that front, you're gonna want more durability out of the carbon and less worry about potential damage. So those are features added into it, although it's a bit heavier than previous models of the Fuel X, it kind of serves an exact purpose. What do you guys think about this new Fuel X 9.7? I think for anyone looking for a high performance bike who doesn't want to spend, you know, $9,000, this really will cover all the notches. The carbon wheels are nice, but not having them isn't the worst thing in the world and it's something you could upgrade in the future. So coming with aluminum, I don't think is gonna make a big deal. One last thing I forgot to mention, this does come with that in-body storage, so you're able to put a tube in there and other knickknacks. I'm not really sure what the point of it is, but I guess it's useful storage if you need extra space and you don't carry a backpack. All right, hopefully this was helpful, and uh, subscribe for more. Thanks. Good luck.